I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is our opening prayer for our Veterans Day services. Almighty God, we pray thee, keep these United States in the holy protection. Cultivate in the hearts of all of her citizens the spirit of devotion and obedience to government, of love toward their fellow citizens, and of dedication to the principles of our American heritage. Watch over our beloved country, O oh God. Preserve her integrity. Guard her from all enemies that she may be guided over and onward by the ways of peace and a happy prosperous and divine, blessed nation. Amen. Amen. Okay, now let's please step up Tony, Joel, Jane. We'll lead us in our national anthem. Not all veterans have seen war, but a common bond they share is an oath in which they express the willingness to die defending this nation. Perhaps the most significant in preserving our way of life are the battles that America does not have to fight because those who would wish to us harm slink away in the fear of the Coast Guard cutter, the Navy aircraft carrier, or the Army soldier on patrol. While we are happy, to be here today to express our appreciation for our veterans. True appreciation is expressed through deeds, not just words. If you are an employer, give extra weight to the experience and skills of the veteran turned job applicant. When an American Legion auxiliary member asks for a donation for a poppy, remember the Korean War veterans in a hospital bed. When a member of Congress complains about the cost of veterans programs, Remind that lawmaker of the cost of being a veteran. Do not underestimate the power of a simple thank you to veterans that you encounter. In spite of the sacrifices that nearly all veterans have made, the overwhelming majority are proud to have served. America has been blessed throughout its history by such men and women. God bless our veterans. God bless America. Thank you for being here. Anybody from uh, any any want to make remarks? You want them to? <laughs> How you doing, Nancy? Good. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, if you could introduce everybody also in up here, Louis, you gonna fill in for Mayor? You got it. Okay, good. I just want to say thank you on behalf of American Legion Post 90. Thank you very much for coming out here today and paying tribute to the veterans who gave their time to protect this country. It's uh. It was a very heartwarming thing that I witnessed the other day. 
I went to Mariannick High School. They, uh, they had a service for Veterans Day. And one of the things that they asked, they asked that all the kids shake a veteran's hand and say thank you, in which they did. I must have shook at least 100 hands of all young people, and I'm very proud of them. It's very good to see them that they attended this function to uh, pay tribute to the veterans. Uh, also, I'd like to uh, make mention, we have somebody from Pennsylvania, Sheldon Evans from Post 395. Pennsylvania, you were here last year. Thank you for attending again this year. Okay, and I just want to ask all the guys, all the veterans, please raise your hand. I just want to see everybody out in the crowd. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, at this time, We'll let the uh, yes, it's elected yes. officials say a few words. Uh, Nancy, I'm going to start with Louie first. Should we go first? Well, you know how it's Louie. Do I go, Nancy? Come on, Nancy. There you go. Good morning, everyone. I'm, I'm Nancy Selickson. I'm the supervisor of the town of Mamaroneck which includes half of the village of Mamaroneck and the village of Larchmont. So I'm very pleased to be here. And I want to thank uh, Post 90 for creating this opportunity for us to be here. It is truly an honor for me as supervisor and the other members of the town board. And those that are with me today are Councilwoman Abby Katz and Councilwoman Jane Elkind Eney. But it's really an honor for us to share this, this moment with you. And we really thank you for the opportunity for inviting us on Veterans Day. And not just thank you for all this, your service during duty, but your service to the community as well. And your service in allowing us these opportunities, creating these opportunities for us to remember and to thank veterans. It is such an important part of our whole society. So we thank you. I have to, of course, call out thanks, uh, especially to VFW Post um, 1156, to um, Bert Corwin and to Tony Marsala for being here. We appreciate them all the time and the wonderful relationship we have with them in the town. So thank you, and uh, we're always up for any kind of uh, events to thank veterans. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for today, for being here. Uh, myself and uh, Trustee Potok from the village of Mamaroneck. Uh, I'll just keep it short. To all our veterans, our volunteers who have sworn to uphold the security of the United States, I thank your families for being here today, and I thank our veterans. I'm proud to join you on this day of honor. On this day and this month, at this hour, our nation remembered the moment when the guns of World War II went silent, World War I went silent. And we recognize the service and the sacrifice the nation of our veterans made for us from Valley Forge to Vietnam, from Kuwait to Kandahar, from Berlin to Baghdad. Our veterans have borne the cost of American wars. They stood watch over American peace. The American people are very grateful to our veterans who have fought for our freedom. Since the presidency of Abraham Lincoln, the National Cemetery has reminded our citizens of the cost of liberty. The simple white markers testify to honor fulfilled and duty served. Most of these markers stand over graves of Americans who came home to enjoy the peace they have earned. Too many stand over the graves of those who gave their lives to protect us for our freedom. This day is dedicated to all those who answered the call of service, where they lived in honor among us, where they slept in valor beneath the sacred ground. On Veterans Day, we honor a new generation of men and women who fought and defended our freedom. Since September 11, 2001, our armed forces have engaged the enemy, the terrorists on many fronts. At this moment, more than 1.4 million Americans are on active duty serving the cause of freedom and peace around the world. They are our nation's finest citizens. They come for grave danger to defend the safety of all American people. They brought down the triumphs. They have liberated our nation to help bring freedom to more than 50 million Americans. Although the sacrifice they are making this nation after safe and secure, they are earning the proud title of a veteran. On this Veterans Day, we are humbled by the hearts of those who have served. Last Saturday at the Marrick Elks Lodge in Marinick, we honored a group of veterans for an afternoon lunch where we met a group of veterans from the VA hospital, King Bridge Hospital in the Bronx. I asked them how they keep their spirits up. One man answered, sir, it's because we feel the American people are so appreciative of our service. Many of our veterans bear the scars of this service to our country. We're a nation that keeps its commitments to those who have risked their lives for our freedom. That young man was right. We do appreciate the service of those who wear our uniforms. 
To help Americans show our appreciation for those who serve, we ask all veterans to wear their medals. The reason for this is I urge our citizens, for those men and women who, take, who shake a hand and give a hug, like Eddie Murray said, and a word of thanks. I ask you to consider volunteering at a veterans hospital or a nursing home. I encourage you to work with our local veterans to help support our troops in the field, their families here at home. As we raise our flag at the bold stand taps, at the bugle stand taps, we remember that the men and women of American forces serve a great cause. They follow the great tradition handed down by American veterans. And in public ceremonies and a private prayer, we give thanks for the freedom we enjoy because of these willingness to serve. Ladies and gentlemen, let's not treat our two million veterans and the saviors of our country the way they are. Even the guns are no longer shooting. I thank you for honoring those who serve today and for honoring those who have set a sterling example, our nation's veterans. God bless our veterans. May God bless those who wear the uniform. May God continue to bless the United States of America. George? As always, George, you made it on time. <laughs> hey, come on, George, up front. Right Take a deep morning. breath. Yes, I got it. <laughs> Just left right. That's right. George Latimer, it's a pleasure. Pleasure is mine. I'm just looking for those right cops that were chasing me down <laughs> the post road. Uh, we just were in Rye uh, a few minutes ago for their ceremony, and yesterday in Port Chester, and later today in Larchmont tonight at the, the, uh, the American Legion Post, and later today in Yonkers. And it's a very comforting thing to see groups of Americans getting together in every one of these communities to do the same thing that you're here to do today, to honor all the veterans, those that died, and those that are amongst us and alive. Um, a couple weeks ago, I uh, was up late at night flipping channels. I don't know how many of you guys do that. You know, it usually costs you two, three hours of sleep because you see something that, you know, you want to see. Your spouse is wondering how come you're not, you know, asleep. Oh, well, I, you know, saw some movie or something I was interested in. And I came across the movie Casablanca. <clears throat> and I'm sure everybody's seen that movie once, twice. It's a terrific movie. And I guess as I was watching, I watched about a third of it, and I was shocked by how many famous lines come out of that movie. Uh, we'll always have Paris, Round up the usual suspects. This is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Uh, you played it for her, you can play it for me. Um, and so as I watched it, I thought, you know, how many great lines are there from movies that have gotten out of movies and become part of our everyday life? Uh, I grew up as a kid, being part Italian-American, uh, watching The Godfather, parts one and two a hundred times, and you know, I'll make them an offer you can't refuse, keep your friends closer, your en keep your friends close, your enemies closer. So on a day like today, I thought of a line that was very, very moving. I've shared this thought in years past, but I saw it more recently. It's the moving, a movie, Saving Private Ryan. It's about 15 years old. Steven Spielberg covers what happened on D-Day in the area afterwards. You know the basic plot of the movie. Ryan has parachuted down behind uh, the German lines on D-Day, and uh, the Department of Defense uh, reports that all of his brothers have died in the service. And so they wanted Ryan to be saved and brought back so that his mother wouldn't lose all of her sons. Like the story of the Sullivan brothers during World War II. And if you remember seeing the movie, uh, Tom Hanks uh, plays in it. Most of the movie is, is shown as a flashback. And it shows what happened during the war and how Ryan, played by Matt Damon as a young man, was saved by, all of the, by this platoon of men that went in to find him and had enemy fire and had casualties. And then the, the I, uh, whatever the title is, lieutenant of the, of the group, uh, died right at the end, Tom Hanks. And then you flash back to the way the movie began, and they were at the, um, the cemetery at Normandy. Rows of crosses, the Stars of David, of all the men who had died there. And the, and the elderly gentleman who's standing there with his wife and family, you realize, is Ryan. Now, is, now he's lived all these years because of this sacrifice. And in the telling moment, the line, that I saw in that movie, it brought tears to my eyes every time I hear it. He turns to his wife and he says, tell me I'm a good man. Tell me, tell me I've led a good life. Now, that's the era of my father. I don't ever remember my father turning to my mother and saying, tell me I'm a good man. But you realize what an emotional moment it is 
to realize the sacrifice that people have made for you. To realize the sacrifice by putting on that uniform. And every man who's wearing either an American Legion cap or a VFW cap made that sacrifice in uniform. Bob Kirby made that sacrifice. Bill Fraser made that sacrifice. Eddie Murray and Howie Heil. Every single one of those people and more made that sacrifice. And that's what today's about. So it's not my place to tell you what your spouse will tell you. Sue Heil will say this to Howie in due time, and Cheryl will say this to Ed in due time. But you are all good men. You have lived a good life, and you're still going to keep on living it. But you've lived a good life because you made a sacrifice. You left this beautiful community where it's wonderful and peaceful, and you go down to Sal's, have a slice of pizza, and you, 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 you walk around the green areas and Harbor Island. Who wants to leave this area to go to Vietnam? Who wants to leave this area to go to Iwo Jima, to go to Pork Chop Hill, to go to Quezon, to go to Grenada, to go to Kandahar? But you did it. And you did it because you love your country, and you did it because you have a sense of duty. And every single one of us here stand in great respect on this day and every day for what you have done. Thank God for every one of you who served this country. Also, I'd like to uh, introduce Steve Otis. How you doing, Steve? Would you like to say a word or two? Okay. George, George beat me here from Rye. I don't know what move he went on. This is such an important day because all the veterans of today and all the veterans who uh, have served in the past and the, the, the gentlemen, men and women that serve in the armed forces today share the legacy of those that fought for generations starting with our Revolutionary War. And that war and what we fight for through the generations is about freedom. Freedom not just in this country, but we fought for freedom around the world time and time again. And the history of history is that freedom is never an automatic. It is always at risk, it is always at threat, it is always threatened. There's no war that ends all wars. And so the sacrifice continues. Uh, the thing that I'd like us to remember this year, and we had an event um, a couple of days ago for the Wounded Warriors cause, is to reflect upon the fact that today so many more soldiers that are fighting survive on the battlefield with injuries that they would not have survived for in, in past years. But the, the on the ground medic teams and recovery teams are so phenomenal that we're bringing back veterans with serious injuries, head injuries, other kinds of injuries that need even more help. And so the message I bring today is that we can do all we can, we should do all we can, to support the different charities, the Wounded Warriors and other charities that support veterans recovery and rehabilitation. This is so important. This is a way we can do something that means something for the people that have given up a part of their lives and the sacrifice of coming back wounded and needing help. It's an honor to be with, here, with you here today and an honor to say thank you to all the veterans that have served and all those that have served our country through the generations. Thank you, Commander. Are there any other politicians? Oh, elected elected officials. Oh, yeah, that's an elected officials. <laughs> <laughs> they would like to say anything. I hope I didn't miss anybody. If I did, I'm sorry. At this time, oh, I wouldn't I would dare not to be a hundred. At this time, I'd like to introduce Richard Cantor to read the Hour of Eleven. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> The Hour of Eleven. From different backgrounds, there have been many who have dedicated themselves to upholding our nation's high ideals. These patriots were not all alike, but they had one thing in common. They risked their lives to defend our nation 
and our way of life. Each of us owes them more than words can express. Let us show our gratitude now by taking this day to honor them in our hearts and pay tribute to their outstanding courage. Legionnaires, we, we are marking the hour of 11. This pause today is to remind us that the hour of 11 has a tender significance to every member of the American Legion. For it was on the 11th day of the 11th month and at the 11th hour that the guns of World War I ceased firing. It was right then that the soul of the American Legion was born. Legionnaires, let us now renew once again our pledge that the honored dead shall not have died in vain, that the wounded, the widowed, and the orphaned shall receive whatever comfort a grateful people can bestow. Legionnaires, let us again resolve our comradeship by our devotion to our mutual helpfulness. Thank you. One closing prayer. Okay, so we're going to ask our Girl Scout Troop 1825 to step up. Okay, look at these yes, troops coming up Yay. here. God bless them. Yeah, look at this. Oh. Brownie Troop. 2995. 29. Also Cadet Troop. And Cadet Troop 
I'd like to say that uh, we have a Judge Gallagher is here. Raise his hand. Where is that? Good to see you. How you doing? Good to see you. Thank you for attending today. Closing prayer. Closing prayer. This is our closing prayer for our Veterans Day uh, service. Grant us, O oh Lord, the courage to so live with our family of nations around the world that the end of strife will be the beginning of enduring peace. Grant us patience and planning with our fellow men and women in a world in which nations may resolve their differences by peaceful means. Touch the souls of people in every land with the enduring light of wisdom so they may form a brotherhood which will strive to further the arts of peace under laws and ethics blessed by thee love. Grant us now the continued blessing upon unity and strength that makes vic victorious possible in war and that we may win greater victories of peace. Amen. <laughs> I just have a, a brief announcement for veterans. There's a new website. I'm going to give this to Ed Murray to post. Uh, but there's a new website, va.gov slash explore, that really does a much better job than previous sites to explain your benefits. And all of us, I mean all of us, there are things on there we can benefit by. So, again, I'll give it to Ed after the ceremony. Thanks, Richard. So this is going to be the conclusion, I think, of our presentation. I'm going to get to have the last word here. So I say, uh, you know... The land of the free and the home of the brave. Well, this is the land of the free, and ladies and gentlemen, these are the brave. Thank you. Thank you. Coffee. Coffee.